Welcome back, Nick Lenz's movie review, episode number 86. This time I'm viewing the 16th James Bond film released, and the second and final film with Timothy Dalton as James Bond, License to Kill, coming out in 1989. Yep. This one is not only the final film for Timothy Dalton, it's also the final film for a lot of people for this for who appeared in the films. It's the last time Robert Brown appears as M, last time for Caroline Bliss as Money Penny, and the last time the director, John Glenn, is for this franchise because with the next film, completely different director. Also, this one has the return of a of a of a Felix Slater. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah, it's the return of the guy who played him in Live and Let Die. Yep. Interesting that they brought him back. Yep, it's, uh, if I can find it here, David Hennison. Yep. It's something that they brought him back, even though it's been like, oh, it's not been 10 years. More like at this point when this film came out, it had been like a good 16 years since David Hennison came back. Oh, yeah, and this film was noteworthy for using a lot of elements, a lot of stuff that was basically cut out from the Live and Let Die, uh, Live and Let Die film in this film. Of course, the main villain in the film is played by Robert Duvall. Fran Sanchez. Yep. This film also has a a early film appearance for Benicio Del Toro. Yep. Benicio Del Toro appears in this movie. And we also have this guy named Pedro Andrés Jr., who, believe it or not, is the son of basically the actor who played Iron Bay from from Russia with love. Yep. The film has a very odd opening. You have Lighter, Bond, and a guy named Sharky going to Felix's wedding. And then they get, and Felix gets word, of like, oh, we're going to get Sanchez. When they do Sanchez, he is confronting his cheating girlfriend. Has the, basically the, the girlfriend's. Well, her one-shot lover, her name is Loopy. And Sanchez is a very dark film. I, I, I like Duvall's performance in this movie. That's the only thing that saves him. But, man, he's a despicable person. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and he punishes her for cheating on him. How? Whipping her! Yes, he takes a whip, not like a long rope whip, a little whip, and whips her back. Yeah, this comes back later on in the movie. Yeah, this shows how dark the guy is. And of course, later on, the guy gets arrested while escaping his plane. Yeah, first he's also the first noteworthy main Von villain who gets arrested. No, he later breaks out. And of course, we have Bond and Felix. And of course, for some reason, Felix would not allow Bond to help out, despite the fact Felix is going to his own wedding, and yet he wants to participate in a attempted an arrest. And, of course, Bond is the one who basically helps catch them anyways. And, yeah, they go to Felix's wedding. Wedding goes off a, off a hitch. And, yeah, they have the wedding reception at Felix's wonderful house. I think this is supposed to be in Miami, I think it is. And, of course, they cut the cake. Now, there's a scene they actually don't have in here of basically... Now, they also have the thing where <laughs> they have the bride kiss Bond. Because, why not? Her name is Della. Wonderful woman. And then, of course, they have a reference in here of Tracy Bond. It's actually the last time you reference a Tracy Bond in these films. Because after this, Tracy Bond never gets referenced in the, in the next eight... Yeah, the eight films that come out of this do not reference her at all. There's no mention Bond was ever married. They're like, oh yeah, he was married like a long time ago. They had like 20 years prior to events of this film, which... Yeah, believe it or not, this film came out exactly as of this year, 30 years ago. Yep, and there's another film that comes out in 1999 as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but then after Bond leaves, then Sanchez's henchmen show up at his house. They take Lighter to see Sanchez has been freed by a corrupt DEA official. I should point out that for some reason, Lighter is no longer CIA in this movie. Yeah, they never explain of why he joined the DEA. It just, oh, he's DEA now for some reason. Even though his last appearance he showed up, he was CIA. As for when or how we switch agencies, the film does not explain it. So yeah, 
There's a corrupt D official who, who Sanchez has pocket, who the guy used to free him via his prison transport, and knock out the guard, and of course, yeah, and of course takes Felix off someplace. And then what happens, Zilla? She gets strangled off screen. Yes, she gets strangled. What happens to Lighter? Hold over a tank with a freaking shark in it and he gets his leg bitten off. This, believe it or not, is taken from the Living Light Diet novel, where in the book, Felix also had his leg bitten off by a shark, but it also had his arm cut off as well, eaten by a shark. Luckily enough, in the film, they didn't bar show his arm. And thank God they enjoy it graphically, because that would have been so stupid. Later on, Felix is alive, despite having his leg bitten off. Bond finds them. And then he, he and Shark, he track down the corrupt D agent. And now him get eaten by a shark while throwing the, 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 the dirty money he was given to, to basically turn against the free Sanchez for some reason. Yeah. And then, like... And then Bond is brought to this light, this building. I'm not sure what, what this place is. Yeah, and M's like, yeah, they'll let the Americans handle it. This by fact, when Bond, Americans do nothing. So he offers to resign, he accepted, and he like kept the press, but nope, he basically runs away. Oh yeah, and here's the thing, I do agree with the criticism, basically, that. M is being a dick to Bond in this scene for, like, no reason at all. And the next time you see M won't be in... He shows up briefly in another scene. After that one other scene, he did show up again to, like, the very end of the movie. You also see a brief cameo by Karen Bliss's M. Money Penny. She has no lines this whole film. She makes this one brief parent make a phone call. Who does she call? Q. Who follows Bond down to South America. We also have Pam Bouvier... I think that's her name, right? Pam Boulevard, played by Carrie Lowell, who's, who's a pilot and works for the CIA. Because why not? And Bond meets her at a bar, which is why they run BC Del Toro. They have a bar fight, they get away, and of course Bond sort of makes moves on her. And then next time you see her, she's got, she got herself a, a, a haircut, where she's kind of like a tomboy-ish. And of course later on, Bond steals all of Sanchez's money. Somehow. And then they go to South America. Bond poses as a rich businessman. And basically, she is his assistant. She goes, why can't you be my assistant? And he says, oh, we're across the border. It's man's world down here. Yeah, it's a bit sexism, basically, when it comes to that. And then, like, Bond basically can't believe the money at the casino. And she orders the same as drink. Baca Martini, shaking that stirred. And... Then basically doesn't drink it, gives the Pam, and she drinks it, and it's terrible. Yeah, like, why does he drink this stuff? He drank this stuff for 16 films, and yet he, a lot of time he does drink it. Mm -hmm. Yep, and then he basically goes to assassinate Sanchez. Well, bas well, first he's basically, getting, this whole time he gets confronted by Q. Yes, Q. He didn't know Q was even there. Q is in a lot of this film, which... And I, I, one thing I thought was so funny about when he met with Q is like, because Q's going to say, like, I hope you don't snore, Q. <laughs> and of course, he sleeps in their bed. I thought this was so funny that basically Bond was with Q the whole film. And of course, he gives him special some, some, some gadgets. And then, of course, he goes along and tries to kill Sanchez. And then he stopped for some reason. He stopped by ninjas for some strange reason. Yeah, he tries to take out Bond. And then, of course, Bond has a special gun, basically, tagged with fingerprint. He had this other MI6 agent. Don't know who this guy is. So he says, he sees the thing like, this is the property of Her Majesty's government. What are you doing with this damn thing? Doesn't explain. And then later on, the whole area, the whole building Bond is in is attacked by the army. Yes, army the freaking tank. Bond gets knocked out. Then he wakes up in the most awkward pause. Wakes up in Sanchez's awesome mansion. Yeah, this one the human just look a person. He's got he's got awesome looking house. Goes around, meets up with Loopy. Bond later sleeps with her. But before he sleeps with her, he basically sees her, sc her scars across his back. Bond has got interesting conversation with Sanchez. So they mentioned he used to work with the British government. Then mentioned we, used to, we did. 
and basically offers to work with him. Bond basically plan main plan is to basically tear apart Sanchez's organization. And yeah, I like this scene. It's a very good scene between Dalton and Sanchez, between Dalton and Duvall. It is by far the best written scene in the whole film. Yeah, Bond and the main villain just talking. Also, forgot to mention though, at the beginning of the film, when have the wedding, Bond is given a wedding present to Felix later, an actual lighter. This comes to play later on in the movie. Yeah, but of course, Bond slowly works to basically tear apart his organization. Yeah, and of course, he plants some money in this, like this freezer, and he's like, "That's my, that's that's." That's my money. And of course the other guy is like, that's not my money. And put it there. So he kills in the most glorious way possible by turning up the temperature in this thing. Causing him to explode. Yes, I highly doubt that can happen in real life. Though I'm not going to test it. And of course Bomb goes to his plant. Oh yeah, what's Sanchez's master plan? Become a very rich de drug dealer. Even though he's already rich. Yeah, his plan is basically the same plan, Mr. Big Hand, and live and let die. Because, why not? Oh, yeah, they meet the plant, then the Miso Toro's character is killed by Pam by throwing him in a thing of paper, killing him, and this makes him one of two Bond, one of two henchmen killed with paper while throwing the paper vat. This won't happen again until tomorrow never dies. Yep, and then Bond basically gets his hands on an oil tanker and has the most awesome sequence of the whole film. Just driving down the road, getting to Sanchez, and then Bond voids a freaking bazooka by driving up this little thing, tilting the truck so the thing passes by him and blows the truck right behind him, gets back down, takes out the guy with the bazooka, and eventually he has a big awesome brawl with Sanchez at the end of the movie. And somehow he's covered in gasoline. And he's like, you want to know why I did this? And he shows the lighter. And it says, Felix and Della. And he burns him to a crisp. He's like, ah, ah. Like anybody else basically who would just get killed by freaking fire. Though this is why he's trying to kill him with a machete. Yep, and after he dies, apparently Loopy gets his mansion and his, his awesome lizard. Yeah, he has this really cool looking lizard got a little collar on it. He has a lot in the movie. And he both has his business. He both has his place of business. He doesn't take it to the plant, thank God. And apparently Loopy gets not only his his lizard, he also gets his house and probably get all of his money. And of course he's like, now nah. he's like, of course she wants to stay with Bond. He's like, now nah, I'm passing you off to the son of Karen Bay. And then, of course, goes to Pam, makes out with her in the water while she's wearing this awesome dress. And then the film ends very awkwardly with a wink. Yep, a wink. This film, despite being dark, it's a good, well-written film. I don't like dark elements in here. I do not like Loopy being whipped. I do not like seeing, I did not like seeing, well, depicted in the film, despite the fact this is from the Bond novels. Lighter gets his leg bent up by a freaking shark. A guy blowing up and of course Sanchez can kill by freaking fire. Yeah, he's by far the only villain I could think of who actually dies but by burning to death. Yeah, a lot of very villains basically either fall high ledges or let's see. Get shot, but never burn to death. He's by far the only villain I could think of in the series who actually bomb burns. Yes. Unlike in the last film where he didn't actually kill the main villain, this film he did. My guess is John Glenn m must have realized his mistake with, with the last one with Dalton. It's like, man, Dalton didn't kill the main villain in the film. Yeah, he got killed by other people. Actually, Bond did kill one of the villains. He killed the Marine guy by killing him with his own monolith. And in the case of the other villain, he gets arrested. Yeah, at least Bond is going to be a lot... I mean, I do appreciate Dalton what he did in here. And... Duvall, basically, uh, performance-wise, he does a fantastic job. He's one of the most well-written villains of the whole series. And Pam, great great, uh, great character. She actually has some of her career afterwards. Loopy, I don't... The actress who plays Loopy, I don't think she does. No. I don't think she does. Uh, she has somewhat of a career. She's still acting. Yeah, she's still acting. Doesn't do very much, but yeah, she does do some acting. 
Pam, of course, well, the actress plays a Carrie, she still is acting after all this time. Yep, she's still acting. And she, of course, well, her last film came out a few years ago, but she's been in TV for a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she appeared on Law & Order as Jamie Ross. Yeah, she was a lawyer on the show. She's appeared some good parents on TV, so she had somewhat of a career since leaving Bond. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Caroline Bliss. A character appeared for a brief cameo. She didn't do very much in this movie. Yeah, she basically just went back to doing theater. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, she's basically just doing plays now. Uh, Robert Duvall, still a critically acclaimed director, and man, the guy has aged since this film. Mm-hmm. The film did came out 30 years ago, so yeah. Oh, it's Robert Davi, not Robert Duvall, my mistake. He is still acting. Yeah, he was in the original Die Hard film as Asia Johnson. Yeah, his most recent film came out just... Well, he did Roe vs. Wade. And he's got a coming film where he's playing uh, in film, playing, uh, film appearance of Reagan. But yeah, he's still acting. Dalton, from what I heard, uh, some people didn't like his performance. They thought he was like a really bad Bond. Also, I've got to point this out, though. One, one of your actually points out, though. Look, take a look at these covers for these movies. I mean, here's License to Kill, and here's Living Daylights. You know what's so silly about these two films? Yes. Dalton is the same exact pose for, like, no reason at all. But at least the backer looks different. Yes. As for why they did this, I don't know why. It's bizarre. Mm-hmm. Yep, but here's the weird thing that happened after, after License to Kill. The next film didn't come out for six years. Why? A bunch of legal stuff. And apparently Dalton was actually working on his third uh, Bond film when he got released. He's probably probably the only Bond to have a dignified ex. He just basically gets removed. Despite the fact, his first film was not exactly that memorable. At least License to Kill is a lot better of a movie. And a lot more interesting to watch. Despite the fact, I don't like the whole drug dealer aspect when it comes to this particular movie. At least Sanchez is a great villain. Despite his dark side. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so my next review for review tomorrow, reviewing the first Pierce Bronson film, GoldenEye. Yep. But any case of Dalton, when it comes like, of these two films that basically Dalton had, I like License to Kill better because it's a little more memorable, and the villain's a lot more interesting than the last film, film villains. But yeah, Sanchez may not appear in any video games as far as, I think he did appear like one video game. But at least a lot more memorable villain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and at least he's got a memorable... He doesn't exactly have a memorable look, dude. He's basically a businessman. At least he's got a cool pet. Yeah, I think he's by far the only villain... He's probably the first villain since Bluffo to have a pet. I mean, can you think of any other villain who had an actual pet? I mean, that wasn't like a, a thing that ate people. Just thing that he could pet. Yeah. Yeah, first one since Bluffo that I could think of that actually this because... Stromberg definitely didn't have one. I mean, none of the other villains did. But yeah. At least at least he had memorable henchmen. This why I can remember his name, but he was played by young Benicio del Toro, who is still a critically acclaimed actor this very day. He's appeared even in two Marvel movies. Yeah, he appeared as Telever Traveler, aka the collector. I love his look for the movie. Mm-hmm. Yep. I kinda wish to bring the character back because he was a fantastic character. Mm -hmm. Yep, so yeah, that's it for this particular review. I have no other views planned for today. So tomorrow, I do have reviews planned. It'll be a review of the newest episode of Black Clover, along with New Chapter Manga. Review of Fairy Tale, the 17th Bond film, which is also the first uh, movie review tomorrow. And possibly review of Magic Kaido 1412, if I get managed to get done by tomorrow. Okay, if not by tomorrow, probably Wednesday. Okay, but see you in the next few. Bye.